I think one of the main problems that we as educators face today is the constant distraction that students appear to have in the classroom. Um, they're constantly connected to the outside world and to their friends and their families through their mobile phones. So in a room such as the one I'm teaching in, where there are computers obstructing my view of the students, it's actually very difficult to know if they're engaging in your activities or if they're actually hiding their hand under the desk and they're on their mobile phone. School, a place of study and success. Friday morning, this Year 11 media class are revising for their upcoming summer examinations. Distractions have been forbidden. Hardworking. Determined. Passionate. Teenagers are more likely to use phones in a social way. The ease of contacting friends through a call, text or email or through social media can boost a teenager's social behaviours helping the adolescent to have an increased rate of contact with peers. Smartphones are an addiction for many teenagers. From sleep deprivation to texting and driving, smartphones present a health hazard for teenagers who cannot break away from the social pressures of constant contact via the smartphone. Sometimes, teenagers replace traditional social skills with text messages, voicemails and pressure to remain available through the smartphone at all times. Pressure can then cause undue stress and anxiety for teenagers with a large social circle. I think the other problem is that because they're constantly being entertained in that way and finding ways to entertain themselves, then it actually makes education seem quite boring to them because it can be quite slow moving and the activities might not engage them as much as say when I was at school. I didn't go home to video games, playing video games all night online with all of my friends. You know, I went home and I read a book. So I think that the experience that young people are having today, they're much more, I think there's a lot, there's an overload of media. There's an overload of media in their lives. So when they come to school, everything can seem a lot slower and maybe that doesn't engage them as much. How much time do you usually spend on your phone in a day? Uh, usually in the day I spend maybe two or three hours on my phone, um, so on a daily basis I'll be checking emails and um, logging into various social media accounts and um, just basic day to day things, even a bit of shopping, so yeah, about three hours in total. In the day, um, usually I go on it whenever I get a message, which is probably every, I don't know, 15 minutes probably, and I'll have a conversation for maybe half an hour. And sometimes I'll use it in school though. Not as much, but and on the weekend I'll probably use it at least like three hours a day. Do you feel like it distracts you from your learning? Um, yes and no. Sometimes it, it can help in a way I can do research on it and in school and sometimes the teachers let us do research on the phone. But sometimes I may be like naughty and I'm going in class and it may be distracting. Do you go to sleep with your phone nearby and why? I usually sleep with my phone nearby, if not next to me. Um, again, it's just to, you know, as everybody does, just to stay connected, notifications, emails, and if you can't sleep, it, you, know, you can watch a TV show on there. So, yeah, it's usually, you know, it's probably far too close, but yeah, next to me when I sleep. I have two phones, and I go to sleep with one of them nearby because I use it as an extra alarm in the morning. Have you had any negative experiences with social networking, such as Twitter, Facebook? No, I had a very delicate situation on YouTube once, which we'll not be going into now, but I have had no other experiences with Twitter or Facebook. What is it like being always being connected to social networking sites? Um it it can be kind of annoying in a way because you feel like you always have to be on Instagram or Facebook because you don't wanna like, not reply or something like that. Um, yeah, it's supposed to kind of bring us closer together, but now more people are just um, using texting. Event? Yeah, You're using texting and stuff, and not speaking in person. Probably over the course of a week, 
um, so yeah, sometimes it has its drawbacks. Networking sites uh, for me are not really important because I don't use them. Uh, because I have a life, and so when I like to speak to friends and go out with them, rather than chatting mainly online, so I don't really have much deal to them. What were phones like when you were in secondary school? They were land-based. People would either go to the telephone box or people would use uh, home lines and people would ring people at home. Um, perhaps near the end of secondary school, uh, some of the yuppies from the city might have a brick this big, which would be the size of the phone, but very few people had mobile phones when I was in secondary school. Um, mobile phones were the most basic phones that they had. Um, it was the first year of having mobile phones when I was in level six. Um, and you basically could call, you could see a telephone number and that was about it on the phone. Do you think the amount of time people spend on their phones is right? Should it change? Um, I think I don't think it's something that we can change or comment on in that detail because I think everybody's different. Um, I think there are obviously some people that need to get out more and actually enjoy life and they actually spend too much time on their phone. Um, if you use it to connect with other people, the range of times to go out is very different. But yes, there are some people who should probably draw, you know, hold back a little bit on their phone usage. Constant communication with Manchester City Football Club, the cricket and any other sporting adventure. What I don't like about it, of course, is the fact that uh, it's work related. So my phone is connected to work. Um, and so if emails or messages come through about work, they can contact me at home seven days a week. What is it about social networking that appeals to you? Social networking appeals to me because you can stay in contact with people from different points in your life, from different points in the globe. Um, it just means that you can, you, know, you can stay connected with people and be a part of their lives even if you don't see them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and obviously, you know, relatives and things like that, they live abroad. It's, it's always good to still be able to keep up with, you know, the developments of their children and jobs and you know that kind of late space stuff you miss otherwise. As the head of sixth form, do you believe the students' grades are decreasing due to growing technology? Uh, students' grades uh, may decrease because of use of technology. They, they shouldn't do. It should be a very beneficial tool for them. Uh, the problem is they waste a lot of time texting, emailing, Facebooking, Twittering, all sorts of things like that, rather than actually working. Um, the problem with uh, the education system in this country is that it's based, on, it's still tested in the same way it was 200 years ago. Students will go into a hall and without their mobile phones, without access to to uh, internet and computers and then they will sit down and do a test. So they still need the same skills they had 200 years ago. Unfortunately, things have moved on from there. One of the chief examiners at the moment is considering allowing students to take in iPads and uh, smartphones into exams to access information that way. Teachers and students have very mixed reactions when it comes to smartphones. However, it is clear that they are a very beneficial tool when handled properly.